This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by my stupendous, awesome, legendary supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support Shadowversity on Patreon, visit patreon.com forward slash Shadowversity. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and I'm back in the workshop, so to speak, uh, making something in preparation for an upcoming video. And of course, when I'm outside, my kids love to be outside, so uh, they're just in the background playing. Hopefully the noise won't be too distracting. Now, I'm doing this often enough that I think I'm going to name this kind of mini-series thing, maybe something like Shad's Shop, because uh, building is fun, making swords is fun, stuff like that. And you guys, I've had enough requests for me to show you how I'm doing it. So I'm going to do a couple other things, and I have some interesting projects coming down the line. But anyway, in this episode, I'm going to be making a gauntlet sword in preparation for another episode of Underappreciated Historical Weapons, which is, of course, going to be on the gauntlet sword. And unlike other episodes of Underappreciated Historical Weapons, I felt a particular need to make this one uh, just to get an idea of how it would handle, what would the properties be. Now, of course, the weight isn't going to be the same, but in terms of the range of movement that I'll be able to figure out, and also the best kind of strikes, and just playing around with the types of attacks and other things like that, I feel this is important for me to share some observations as to the pros and cons of this weapon. I just, I just need it in my, you know, in my hand, so to speak. But the thing is, you can't really buy a, like even a practice court sword or and a replica is too expensive and important and everything, and also production schedule uh, when I get this video out for, you know, in the next couple of days to a week or so. So I need it fairly soon, and of course, when I'm in that position, you just make it, okay? And making stuff, it's fun, and it saves you money and other things like that. Hi, Daddy. <laughs> All right, so uh, plywood, of course, good old plywood. Uh, this one's about a centimetre thick, and I have a couple of other things because I actually want to get the full gauntlet uh, thing, and so this is the plan, and we'll see if it works out effectively. I have some plastic bowls here, and so paint it up, you won't even be able to tell the difference. And for something that, just to get the range of movement, and even for light sparring for like synthetics, this would do fairly well. So I got this thing, and, uh, and look, it's actually a decent size for my fist. So I'm going to cut out this section here, to go over my wrist, and so that's going to be the, the, the fist part of the gauntlet. Hello. Say hello. <laughs> but the actual bracer part is going to be interesting. So I have a plan, I have no idea if it's going to work, but uh, we'll see. So I also have this ply here. This is like one and a half to two mil thick. It's very, very flexible. Can you see this? But it might not be flexible enough to go kind of right over the wrist. So I'm going to try. Thank you. I'm going to try and soak it. Um, I don't know. Like generally, with regular wood, soaking it will get the pliability in it, and then you let it dry and it'll hold the shape. Don't know how well it's going to work with plywood because of the glue. Uh, hopefully it will. So that's the first thing we're going to do. I'm going to cut out a, a, like a chunk, you know, about a square, something like this, something that I'll cover my forearm for the bracer. And then I have some water here in a tub that I'm going to soak while I'm working on everything else. Alright, um, so let's see, make sure that uh, I have enough going over. Alright, that's plenty, and I, I want a bit of slack on the side so I can cut it in shape. So, will this be... <laughs> Flex over the whole thing, we'll find out. So, there's a tub of water, there's the board, and uh, where's my brick? There's, there's my brick. So, uh, hold this uh, under the water, like so, and uh, that'll actually probably put a curve in it just as it is. So, look at that. Hopefully, that will soak it and allow me to flex it over where I want it. So, now we can start measuring out the gauntlet part and blade, and uh, also draw it out. So, uh, uh, blade length for a gauntlet sword, on average, around a meter. Uh, go down. You can tell that uh, we'll color this. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So, meter about there. This might end up being a little shorter than the average. So. Uh, there's another way I can do it, but then I will see. Alright, so. Okay. Oh, 
I'm just expecting one of them to, I don't know, set something on fire or injure themselves. And I'll be talking here and they could be screaming, crying. Well, I think I'll pick about they scream. But uh, maybe the lead up to the accident will be, I'll be oblivious to it and you guys will see it, you know. I'll pick up something hugely dangerous and stuff like that. Anyway, um, kids, they heal, right? Alright, so I'm more responsible than that. So, uh, I'm going to do this in the eye card because I don't have the full length. I could have done it in one, but in all honesty, this this way would be a bit better. But we'll, let's see how. Uh, I'm going to make the blade an inner part of the gauntlet in three, kind of like a three stage construction, uh, you know, three parts. Uh, so I'll show you how I'll do that in a sec. Alright, so I'm going to uh, draw out the blade profile first. And, uh, Without a ruler, improvise. Alrighty, that's looking good. So this is what we got, okay? I uh, first did it here, and uh, it was too close to the edge for reasons that you'll see in a second, because as we go down, uh, you'll notice there's gonna be something kind of different about this design than a regular gauntlet sword. And that by necessity, because this is wood, it's gonna be much, much thicker along here and along here, because I need this stability. This is basically what's gonna be holding the blade. And so on a regular real gauntlet sword that's made out of steel, just go straight down and then the uh, the covering, the, like the part that covers your fist, is only about this small. In fact, they're even much smaller. Like traditional gauntlet swords, I don't know, because it's an Indian weapon in origin, and uh, they just have smaller hands, but uh, <laughs> they're generally even a bit smaller than that. Really, it's a real tight fit. Um, and so I need that width just my hand and then I need the bits on the sides for the stability of the overall shape and of course you can see how much it extends down and so when I did this one I was like yeah there wasn't enough room so I did it here and so we got it opening up here it's gonna come in this is a handle and then you'll see that uh, the length of my plywood isn't long enough for the whole, uh, you know, brace apart. So I'm actually going to uh, be doing two additional parts of wood that'll extend down here, and I'll glue them on, on one on top and one underneath this section to get the full uh, gauntlet part of this sword. So that's where we're at at the moment. We have the shape, just need to cut it out. This is a little bit better than putting it onto my trample. If you've seen me build, uh, the build video of Kratos' uh, Leviathan Axe I'm using my trampoline as a workshop. Uh, you, know, you know, I could be a redneck sometimes. This is 
so I can cut out the handle. What are you making? I'm making an omelet sort, or also known as a pata, traditionally. Can you say pata? Did that scare you? Okay, so cut out the section and uh, you know, this is actually looking pretty good so far. That's where it'll be held. But there's a couple of bit like uh, of edges that, because the jigsaw is a bit too much of a sharp curve for it. So I'm just gonna drill out that uh, you know, curve right there and uh, make it more smooth. <laughs> okay, this is getting pretty cool. All right, a couple of things to finish off with it, of course. I'm not done yet. Right. So this is where I'm going to get the additional kind of length I need on the arm brace um, and also where I can add the bottom strap so it'll be able to, you know, strap to my forearm right there. And so I'm going to be doing two cutouts of this, this will be the first one and it's, I'm going to glue it on top of uh, this and of course on the other side as well. It'll actually look kind of cool and then, you know, my... Uh, part that's going to be covering my fist will go over there of course I'm going to cut this section out and then I can like attach the brace apart out going down this is actually going to be pretty cool measure how far the sides of the uh, brace will go down and what will be comfortable. So I'm just going to hold it on. This. Because, yeah, see, uh, this part is biting in. So I'm actually going to want to finish off about there, the brace part, to be decently comfortable. <laughs>
Alrighty, so these are the two pieces and uh, I'm going to go, uh, I'll glue them to the front and back, the main piece here. Um, make sure it gets all lined up, I'm just doing it rough now. Well, what's kind of cool about this is, see how there's a bit of a lip here? Well, the handguard is going to fit in perfectly right like that. So I'll glue that there once uh, um, this is all together. That's what's and that's what I'll need to do next. Oh, I gotta love glue. This stuff is really good as well. Uh, it dries like really hard and has some level of elasticity to it. Actually, put too much down here uh, because uh, this part doesn't extend. But uh, I'm squish it down, it spreads out to the edges. It's a bit slippery. Yeah, it is. That's why I'm going to stick it all together. There's clamps. Okay, there's one clamp. So there, no? Yeah. Oh, you can see the clamps. Yeah. I really like this video. Clamps are great. Alright, so clamped it together a bit, but of course, scrape away some of the Excess glue there. This is electrical angle. Like Alrighty, so now got the hand guard. I'm just gonna mark out a section here, cut it out, so it'll sit over my fist. Should be enough. But in this case, I think it's better to make an opening too small than too large. Because if I make it too large, uh, I can't shrink it. But if I make it too small, I can open it up just that little bit extra to accommodate for my wrist. So, start with something like this. Because remember, I don't need it to cover my whole wrist, or only half, because uh, it's only going to be sitting halfway in, right, if you see there. Now the fun joy of uh, trying to uh, cut this open. Oh gee. All right. Oh, it's a little tight, but let's just see. up a little bit more but that got the height on it uh, correct I think it's amazing how much time power tools will save you so instead of trying to sand uh, the opening larger by hand I now have the perfect excuse to whip out this thing <laughs> automatic sander gotta love it So, on my other swords, uh, if you notice the fancy pummels they have on the back, did uh, shape them with an automatic sander. These are the brilliant, I love them. Gee, this one is chunky. Oh, beautiful. So one of the cool things about sanders like this is that they're made to be balanced. You can flip them upside down and actually use it as kind of like uh, a rough sanding bench. You just be careful with it. And uh, this will do the job. Let's get this going. Okay, so that has opened up, you know, this considerably. And uh, because it's not going straight over, it's actually a bit further up 
near my fist. So it needs a, a larger opening because of that. All right, so now uh, this is uh, the gauntlet sword. Okay, all uh, clamped together, still drying. We've got the hand guard right there. And that fits over my fist really well, actually. Uh, uh, so the next part is kind of a bit of a moment of truth. See if uh, that wood is soaked and actually is as flexible and malleable as I hope. Okay, well, it feels wet, but I don't think this is going to flex. Yes, I think I need to do it longer overnight or in warm water. One way I might try this is I'll put it in a clamp, try and curve it this way. Then I might stretch it to where I think is a, a limit point and put it back in the water. Try and stretch again. So see how see what I'm doing here. So I might need to leave it overnight and see how it looks. Oh, I heard it start to break it, so this is certainly a limit. Put it back in the water and see what happens. What it looks like tomorrow, hey? Try again. Okay, it is uh, the next day, morning, or close enough to it, of the next day, and uh, let's see. Now this thing is gone. I suspect that uh, it might not keep the curve, or it might not be as malleable as I hope, because it's in cold water. So I might have to uh, soak it in warm water somehow, which should loosen up the glue in between the plywood kind of layers and allow for more flexibility. Now well, let's uh, let's find out how this is gone. Hey, no, nah, it's not working. I am still pretty stiff. Uh, if I push it, I reckon it will snap. So let's have a look. Well, it's curving more than um, it was yesterday. Interesting. I'm not hearing uh, any cracks. Oh, there we go. There we go. So it's not liking it. Yeah, so I'm not sure this is going to work. I mean, I could try warm water and probably find success that way. But... Uh, I don't know how to heat up a large enough body of water outside with the tools at my disposal. I mean, short of heating up it like a pot individually and pouring it in, that's just too much stuffing around. So I have a decent plan B to get the uh, bracer portion on the gauntlet sword uh, separate to curving wood. Uh, so I'm probably going to do that, and because of that, I'm willing to uh, push this to the limit and see at what point it breaks. So let's find out. Do it with the clamps. So Old kind of way. Alright, let's see. I mean, it's curving a lot more than it did yesterday, so soaking it has done, you know, alright so far. Hearing, hearing it slowly crack. But that's a, that's a decent curve, much more than we got yesterday. So there you go. Soaking wood has worked to an extent. Alright, yep. Crack is forming right on the edge. You can see how it's uneven now. It's kind of got a small point right here. So this is where the crack is forming. Keep going. That crack is increasing. Yep. Ready? Wait for it. I wonder if it might pick up the cracks if we get close. What's interesting is this end hasn't really snapped. So this is basically, yeah, snapped in down the middle now. But it's funny how slowly these cracks are popping in. Yep, and there we go. So that'll be plan B today, uh, but I will be able to finish off uh, the gauntlet with uh, my alternate method. Oh look at this, new camera angle, you see more of what I'm working on and less, you know, glare from the sky up above. And I get to sit down, which means I get to be a bit more lazy. It's a win-win for all. 
Okay, so what my plan is, uh, for the brace apart, I'm going to cut out some rectangles from this off cut here uh, to make kind of like a box, okay, half a box that's uh, two sides here and one flat over the top. And uh, I'm going to try to join them all together uh, properly by sanding the edges on angles. But generally when I've tried to do this in the past, it hasn't been very successful. And this is coming from someone who actually worked as technically in the joinery department, but I was making windows and joins are really easy. They were more angles. So anyway, uh, you could measure it to be exact. I'm too lazy for that, so I'm just gonna mainly eyeball it. Uh, I'll measure the shapes so they're the same. Maybe I won't, I'll see. <laughs> but hopefully it'll be good enough. All right, so I have the three pieces cut together, two sides and the top. My intention is to uh, have the, them fit together like this. Here, it's going to be, you know, not straight down, but a little off to the sides. And I'm going to sand off these corners, so hopefully the join will fit together and look pretty nice and flush, if I can do it. All right, with my three pieces and the joints all sanded in, I made a rough, a really rough jig to hold it in place while I glue it and let, the, uh, let it set. So just two side pieces there to hold it and sit. Of course, I'll line it up um, and uh, hopefully it'll work. day now uh, just had to give it time to let the glue set so this, uh, this build video is kind of uh, going over a few days it's not like I'm working every day and it's like it took so many days to build it's just a little bit of work but because glue you gotta wait let it set it dries next day and uh, there we go. and look it's turned out pretty well so uh, much better than I was actually kind of expecting and uh, we got it all you know so it'll so it'll slit, sorry, sit mostly flush. Uh, now, of course, it doesn't fit perfectly in, as you'll see here. Uh, see how it's straight and this is curved? So I'm gonna sand out um, a portion uh, right here, okay? Uh, so it'll fit in better to uh, the gauntlet, you know, gauntlet sword. So that's what I'll be doing now. Things like this that I love sanders. You can just end up kind of, you know, grinding in some fairly complex uh, angles. Oh, so sanders, they're great. But have a look at it. So you see the curve, and it's not just a kind of straight curve. It's actually a curve that's uh, on an angle going in like that. So let me try and show you uh, the angle that this has been ground on. You see there, so. Uh, and this is, so it'll fit in, and, and it's not perfect, right? But it actually does a fairly good job. Do you see the like that? And just eyeballing it, that is actually fitting pretty good. And now all it's gonna take is gluing it on, and <laughs> it's gonna be basically done. I'll paint it up, but uh, the gauntlet sword, hey!
so this is basically it, okay? I'm gonna paint it, uh, which will be easy enough, but this is the overall shape. Now, does it look exactly like a real historical gauntlet sword? Uh, no, there's way too much meat on the edges here. In fact, uh, real historical gauntlet swords don't have any of these edges and the blade just kind of comes straight out of the handguard right here. Uh, but for uh, just having a usable kind of uh, prop and G, you know, like uh, if you stained it, it could probably, you know, stand a bit of a whack. You could almost use it as a, as a waster, you know, as a, a training sword, just to get the idea of what it would be like to use one of these things. But this is, <laughs> this is it here. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll let it dry a bit and then I'm going to paint it and I'll show you what it looks like once it's all done. So the glue hasn't even dried yet, but I'm going to try and do something that uh, is potentially risky. I'm going to try and use a sander and sand in some edge bevels and even a central fuller. I could kind of ruin the look of the blade, especially if I make it wonky and wobbly, but uh, why not? I'll give it a go. And even if I ruin it, I mean, I'll still have the prop I need to get an idea of, you know, gold sword kind of handling characteristics and stuff. So, uh, let's hopefully, hopefully it'll work out. Oh boy, that was an instructive experience, uh, because Tell you what, oh, that was kind of a mess. You see how wobbly this line is? So I have a newfound appreciation for the guys over at Man at Arms Reforged, so specifically the guy that does the grinding. Though I suspect grinding on steel might actually be easier than wood, because with wood, you press a little bit too hard and you can grind way further in than you ex you're expecting. And you'll notice there's no fuller, because as I, I, I started trying to do the fuller and it was a wobbly mess. <laughs> So I quit while I was ahead. Now I could have done something that I, uh, which I suspect would be how you solve this, because I watched someone else grind on a steel one, and they put like a steel backing, and they clamped it to, you know, the thing to the back, and their sander was also clamped in place, and they just slid it along their kind of uh, platform that they had to get a perfectly straight fuller in line. Uh, so that's probably what I'd have to do to uh, make a nice looking fuller. Yeah, of timber at least because it's so easy to just you slip and you're something all over the place I can paint over that and you won't be able to see it uh, But I'm glad I at least got some kind of edging on it You know it looks a bit more sword like as a result and so now I just need to paint it My wife being the uh, clever woman she is informs me that uh, this might be a bit too smooth for just painting right on and uh, Especially the, the parts that are glossed so if I paint it, it's, there's a chance the paint will just chip off and slide off. And so that I need to go and sand it to make the top a bit rough to give something for the paint to cling on to. So, yeah, she's a clever woman. There's a reason why I married her. Not just because she's clever, a lot of reasons. So yeah, that's what I'm just doing now. I'm gonna go over and rough up the plastic a little bit, ready for painting. So it might look a bit too, I don't know, blue. Uh, I didn't exactly pick the best colour for it. Um, and uh, it might have looked pretty good just left as the wood if it wasn't for the big glowing red kind of <laughs> um, handguard there. So it's better to have it all kind of uniform colour. Um, I have a really kind of glossy um, silver that I might put the blade in and uh, it'll look like an ultra glossed blade but uh, I don't know that kind of difference in brightness or tone could actually make it look alright. Um, so now I just need to try and get a thicker layer over this red part so none of the red stuff you know uh, you can see through the lines. This is looking far more silvery, a little metal, I don't know, you can decide for yourself. Uh, but it looks better than just having that red kind of thing all being one uniform colour. Now, if you're a rather astute, you might have realised that uh, I have neglected uh, something up to this point that's rather crucial for something like because you don't just have a hand, okay? Um, just because the paint is still a little wet on the sleeve. Uh, it's not just the handle, it's supposed to be a strap around the forearm. So, how am I going to do that? Well, ah, 
is what it is for. It's, it's a dog collar, okay? Um, now, it's not very historically accurate. We have a, uh, a latch like this, right there. But uh, my goodness, is it going to be a lot easier to put on uh, and off without having to do, you know, fiddle with a buckle. So uh, now I just, yeah, just attach this and, and then we're done. So the plan is, because you'll notice, see how, you know, there's those divided uh, sections there? Uh, my plan is to jam uh, this right in uh, between the, the sections here. So I'll show you what that'll look like. And about right there. So, you see that? And then, with that in there, so this will you know, be the down part, and that'll loop around like so. I just nail right through the guts to hold it in place. And uh, that's a fairly simple um, and effective solution, yet a uh, you know, forearm strap all the way around. So I'll just do that now. So that's it there. The, uh, the strap is in place. You'll notice that there's a bit of uh, you know, bits hanging out on the sides. I can actually chop those off. Uh, I want to have a limb in place and make sure we're ready to uh, nail it. Now, in this situation, we're going to be using uh, little nails. Little nails. And here we go, <laughs> this is it, the completed gauntlet sword. And my goodness, does this thing feel weird? <laughs> but for my full thoughts on, uh, you know, the history of this sword and its uh, handling characteristics and stuff, well, you'll need to go watch uh, my video, Underappreciated Historical Weapons, on the gauntlet sword. It should already be up, because I'll be posting the build video afterwards. So I'll put a link there and also a link in the description below. Hope to see you there, and I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, it's turned out all right. I got like a Oh, look at this thing. Oh. All right, so, yeah, hope to see you there, and until that time, there we go.